And that, my friends, is how you be online. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome, we welcome. It. The interwebs. We made it. The interwebs have not let us down today. Uh, welcome to Just Follow Me, our live webinar co-presented with QSE and our friends from Sennheiser. Um, this is going to be a pretty exciting webinar, I think. Um, we, uh, we're going to be introducing you guys to, uh, if you haven't already heard about it, uh, the Sennheiser Team Connect 2 ceiling microphone from Sennheiser and how it gets integrated into QSYS. Uh, and on top of that, we'll be introducing you to a beta version of a plugin that will be coming out relatively soon that will allow you to automatically pr uh, recall presets in QSYS so that you don't have to man a touch screen in order to get that camera in the right place. This is gonna help get it in the right place in the room. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go over some quick ground rules while everybody is kind of filing into the uh, webinar. Uh, as with all QSC webinars and most webinars, we encourage you to participate. We are here for you. Um, there is a Q&A section Put all those Q&As in the chat. We have a couple folks from Sennheiser and QSC that are actively looking at that Q&A. So if you have questions, um, we'll probably answer it live during the webinar or via chat. chat. Uh, and in fact, if you have a VoIP connection, if you have a microphone and a headset and you want to participate, that would be great. Um, put it in there. Cool camera, the bank where we can pull callers off the phone. Exactly. That's exactly. Really cool. Like, yes, and caller one, you're online. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and of course, um, not of course, this is actually relatively new for QSC. I know Sennheiser, you guys have been doing this for a while, but this webinar is in fact VIXA certified, which means that if you are in pursuit of those RUs for your recertification, um, we are here for you. So just know that you got to stick to the end of the webinar, obviously, to get the credit. And there is a quiz at the end. We'll be sharing that link at the, at the end of the presentation. Um, so you got to stick around. You can't uh, skip to the end. Um, and stick, you have to show your work, unfortunately. Um, so with that, I am going to uh, ask our presenters to show their cameras. Uh, obviously, in the room, uh, my name is Patrick Hine. I'm the director, uh, senior director of marketing for our systems group. We also have with us our esteemed colleague, Gary Evans, who uh, runs our technical management for our strategic alliance. Nice. Yep. Thank you, Gary. Uh, and on the Sennheiser team, we have Andrew uh, Kornstein, uh, Steen, yes, Steen, uh, who, is our uh, who is our business development manager. Let's, let's make sure your microphone is unmuted, Andrew. Sure. Oh, we did it. All right. And Chris Phillips, who is a uh, technical application engineer for Sennheiser. Let's hear that microphone, my friend. Hello, everybody. Perfect. Woo. Look at that. All right. Let's set some uh, ground rules for timing, just in case you guys are kind of trying to manage your time and you have to kind of jump in and out. Uh, this is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, first, we're going to review what the use cases are for the plugin in particular, because we want to make sure that it gets used properly and you know the expectations are set um, so that you're not using it uh, inappropriately or, or in the in anything but the best case scenario. So uh, we'll go over that. Then our friends from Sennheiser are going to give us a quick 10 minute overview of the microphone itself. And then Gary is, for, for all of the tech people, is going to go through in great detail how to hook up both the TCC2 control plugin yeah. into yeah. QSYS and, and this new beta version of the automatic preset recall plugin. Uh, and then at the end, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, it's the holiday, um, we're, uh, and I'm a theater guy. So we're going to do a little bit of really, really, I put fun in quotation. Um, you might hate it. <laughs> it's actually quite possible fun. that this is <laughs> going to be terrible. But we are going to we are going to stretch the bounds of both the plug-in and the microphone. Um, so those of you that really want a, a, a good overview of how the microphone is actually working in real life, we'll do that. And then a QA. and a um, So again, uh, I see a couple of Q and A's popping in there every once in a while. So keep them coming. Um, let's do some level setting here because um, there was a, our initial email actually used the word camera tracking. And there, the reality is there's, there are broad uses of the word camera tracking. So we want to be very clear what we're showing and what we're not showing. Um, so automatic camera preset recall means essentially that you are setting up zones 
in a given space uh, that your speaker may enter and based on the position of his voice in relation to the microphone, it will recall that preset. Uh, now this is, this is ultimately the best use case for this is to get the camera in the general vicinity. What this is not for is for production. Like you wouldn't use this in a big theater yeah. um, to, 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 to do a live capture of a theater. Um, camera tracking, as most people know it to be, is based on either facial recognition or oftentimes people wear like lanyards that have IR technology and the camera is tracking either your face or that. That is not what we are showing. We are showing automatic camera preset recall, which is essentially steering. So I did want to be clear. Uh, so let's let's talk about, and you were gonna say something here, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, you're right. It's, it's recalling positions. It's great for what we do in the conferencing side and where the TCC is the kind of microphone that you're installed, you know? So exactly. it's perfect for these kind of environments. So. Exactly. So like, here's a, here's a COVID friendly training room, for example. And we've got, a, uh, we've got a few preset zones for our instructor. So obviously when she steps into these zones, the camera is automatically hitting that preset zone. Um, and uh, transversely, when there's a question in the audience, you have the opportunity to create zones for each of those tables as well. So the camera is hitting the table. Now the camera it is, may not be tracking in on somebody's face. And, a, and a, essentially in a training room, you don't want that. You basically want to get that camera so that it covers the entirety of that table. So you don't want a tight, a tight um, preset. You want to make sure that you're covering the general area that you're working towards. Um, here's a closer look at what that training room might look like. Again, you've got loudspeakers overhead. In a, in a room of this size, we would recommend two Sennheiser microphones um, that are positioned relatively in the center of the room so that it can hit the presenter as well as the audience. And then again, you've got the rest of the, the, the QSYS um, ecosystem to support that effort. Let's talk about another one. Actually, this is a pretty fair representation of the room that we're in right now. So we've got positions that our COVID friendly um, table has mapped out. So the camera knows that if you're sitting at one of these places and the angle that the microphone is picking you up at, depending on where you're at, um, it will trigger a preset. Um, and in this room, actually, we've got two cameras. So if Gary, or, if Gary were to get up and um, orate in front of the room, mm -hmm. the camera would automatically switch to that camera and the, the preset zone. Um, here's what that room looks like. Again, two cameras, one in the front, one on the side. Um, Gary's actually, uh, he, he, he has the ability to use the MV32H that's at the head of the table. And again, this is, this is a pretty standard use for this plugin. We're not zooming in tight on faces. Rather, we are getting close to the zone. So that way we have a comfortable margin of error so that if I move from one side to the other, the camera is still picking up everything. Um, let's see, if anybody monitoring that Q&A, I see Q&A popping in there. Is there anything of interest before we transition? Mm -hmm. I promise that I would. Yeah, Hank is asking the camera chip size. The camera chips, like uh, the, the, the color sensor size, right? Is that is that the nature of the question? I actually- It's on our website. You know what? <laughs> Uh, as as the Sennheiser group is going through their portion, I'm going to look that up for you guys. So no problem. Any anything any other anything else of interest? Let's see. Camera chip size. How do you trigger the zone? Please elaborate. Well, let me. Well, we'll get to that when I talk about it. But yeah, yeah. we'll yeah. we'll we'll talk about setting up the angles and how we do all that when we get into the QSIS yeah. side of things. So the we'll the, the short version of that answer is it's based on the angle that you are sitting in relation to the microphone. But Gary is going to go closer into that. Uh, and it looks like we are ready. I'm going to stop sharing. And the Sennheiser folks are going to take us through an overview of the microphone. Great. So Chris, um, yeah. All right. So Chris, you got your screen up. I see it. 
And all right. Good to go. All right. So we'll give you a, a nice little overview of, uh, of the microphone. Um, just a, a few basics about it. Um, it. We do use this concept of automatic dynamic beamforming technology. Uh, so, so as we've talked about a little bit before, um, it does create a virtual audio beam or a, a pickup beam, if you will, uh, to the loudest voice in the room. That beam itself is about a 30 degree pattern. You can really think of it as a very tight shotgun microphone. For a room with, um, with, with normal uh, par acoustics, I would say, uh, a good rule of thumb is a diameter of about 30 feet is the, is the pickup range. Eight to 12 feet above the ground is about what we recommend uh, for hanging. If you do have a very high ceiling, um, like, a, like an open plan or something like that, then we do have some suspension kits to keep it sort of at that 10 to 12 foot uh, rule. If it's a, um, a regular drop tile ceiling, then we have the hardware to mount it into a two by two space uh, if you'd like to do that. Um, now, it is a single beam that is dynamic and beam forming. That means that there's one audio output. Uh, and then, uh, like a lot of our products, we make this uh, in Germany as well. So the way that this uh, microphone is connected, you can see uh, the picture on the left. This is what's exposed. This is what's facing down. And then to the right here, uh, let's go ahead and zoom into the connectivity. So we'll, we'll look at this uh, connection hatch right here. Um, there's a couple of Dante ports right there. It's a primary and secondary. Now, it's important to know that that is just one flow. Just, just one Dante flow, that's it, coming out of it. Uh, the secondary could be used as a switch hop if you want to go to another microphone or you know another Dante device uh, in the ceiling. If you wanted to, you could use that. Um, or if you were uh, doing redundant networks, uh, then you could use a primary and secondary for redundancy. Um, it's got the analog out if you choose to use that. So that's just a balanced three pin Phoenix uh, connector right there. And then the other network port on the right is for control and for PoE. Uh, and then Chris will uh, kind of dig into the control platform just, uh, just a little bit. So if you are running a Dante network, two category cables to it and you're, and you're set and ready to go. If you're just front wanting to use the analog output, one category cable for power and control, and then a, uh, a, a two conductor shielded cable uh, for the analog output side. Um, and then it's a Broadway chip. So of course it's uh, uh, compatible with DDM and, uh, and AES67 as well. So just a, a quick little picture of what the coverage looks like. Um, you know, if you're if we're looking kind of at that 13, uh, 14 feet radius, we've got really good coverage and then just a little bit of a slight drop off after that. Um, this picture right here just shows what it looks like at about a 10 foot height. That'll change a little bit if it's lower or if it's higher. But again, if we kind of stay within this 28 to 30 foot diameter rule of thumb, we're in really good shape with that. So when we look at the automatic dynamic beam forming technology, we are not using multiple lobes or zones of pickup coverage. We are using that one tight angle. And it is important to know that, that that beam, it doesn't follow an area in the room or a general direction of where the sound is coming from. It actually locks on to the XY coordinates of the voice itself. Uh, or whatever whatever the sound source is. So in this case, we've got somebody sitting at a U-shaped table. Uh, he's, he's talking, he's presenting. If he stands up and he walks to the other side of the room, as long as he's within this pickup radius, then that beam is going to lock on him. So another, um, another use case of this microphone is to use it in flexible spaces. So uh, the previous picture had a, had a room that was a U-shaped table that the next day that same room uh, could be this stand up type room or this other, you know, sort of a flexible meeting space. Um, if that microphone is centered in the room, since it does just pick up whoever's talking, doesn't really matter where the seating configuration is or uh, who happens to be talking. Um, so the same microphone, the, the same room next day could be set up as a, a training room style uh, or, or like a classroom style seating configuration. And the way that you're seeing this right here, um, we're going to have perfect coverage of the people sitting in the seats uh, or the uh, presenter at the front of the room because they're all within this coverage area of uh, the microphone itself. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Chris to talk about some of the control platforms. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, so we 
have our uh, Sennheiser Control Cockpit software. It is uh, what we use to uh, configure and set up the microphone. Uh, what Andrew showed, uh, if you provide PoE power to it and uh, um, route the audio to, to your QSIS system, it's going to have a pretty wide pickup area. Um, so you can go into control cockpit and you can, you can make some adjustments uh, for its uh, um, uh, pickup area by creating exclusion zones, which we'll take a look at. Um, one great thing about the about QSIS is they've taken a lot of the features that we'll see in Control Cockpit and they built it into uh, their plugins, so you can kind of do all of this setup within the, the QSIS ecosystem. Um, Control Cockpit is also uh, compatible with our uh, wireless products, our um, uh, Speechline Digital Wireless, Evolution Wireless G4, uh, 6K Wireless, and then as uh, Team Connect Ceiling 2. Um, and if you did have this on your network, uh, you could use a web browser to, you know, as you moved about your campus or, or enterprise network, you could navigate to it and, uh, and monitor all and adjust your devices. Here's kind of what the dashboard looks like uh, for a control cockpit. And uh, once you go in there, you can see multiple devices that are on your network. Um, and then uh, we'll take a live look at this, but uh, uh, I, I just take note as uh, to what's available here in Control Cockpit. This is our software. And once you start to see uh, what uh, what we're doing uh, and what QSIS is doing with it, you'll see you have a lot of these similar features right in the plugin. Um, so when you think about exclusion zones, uh, the different thing with the TCC2 uh, is Andrew mentioned ours is only one beam, uh, a very narrow 30 degree beam that is always uh, switching between uh, around 700 different vector points in this hemispherical pattern. So it's always uh, with the milliseconds jumping back and forth and picking up whoever's talking. If there's uh, areas of the room where you don't want to want it to uh, pick up, you create what we call an exclusion zone. Uh, so you can see we can edit on the right hand source detection side, kind of a pie out of the front of the mic which will allow it to ignore this projector. It just gets rid of those vector points that the, the microphone might steer to, as well as the sound bar in the front wall, but it's still picking everybody at the table up. If you uh, say this room, uh, you know, you wanted to maybe uh, make it more defined towards the table, you could set a vertical exclusion zone and really trim that down so the, the microphone's not gonna steer anywhere but the table in that scenario. Um, the control cockpit uses our sound control protocol, which is our API for the mic, and uh, that PoE uh, network port, the LAN port, is uh, is where that communication is going. Um, all uh, the control cockpit is using the same commands that um, QSIS is using, and uh, that's why we're able to kind of seamlessly control it with the with the QSIS ecosystem. Uh, so all of these commands are are available there, and uh, and the plugins really use them to to kind of do a, a lot of powerful things. So what I'm going to do really quick before we hand it back over uh, uh, to Patrick uh, is we're going to take a look at uh, the control cockpit in real time and, and just see how uh, closely this microphone tracks. So if I move my head a little bit, you've got the horizontal angle and the vertical angle. And as I move, uh, it'll, it'll shift uh, an average of five degrees. It's going to measure that shift. So it could be four degrees and six degrees depending on where you're at in the pattern, but typically it's about five degrees and it's gonna register that and, and send that command every time I move. And you can use that uh, uh, in, in camera tracking and um, uh, preset recall, not camera tracking, uh, camera preset recall. So with that, I'm gonna send it back to uh, Patrick and uh, we'll see how this works. And uh, Patrick, do you mind if I just address a couple of questions that came in the chat? I was uh, starting to uh, type a few, but but there was a uh, a couple that that came in that were similar. Um, some questions are if the microphones in a larger room, if you need more than one, uh, are they aware of each other? Do do they do some sort of a handoff? So microphone one, does it hand off to microphone two if it's not in use? And and the answer to that is no. Um, one mic, since it does cover about a thirty foot diameter, if you have a larger room like let's just say 60 by 60 and you need four mics for good coverage. Those are four distinct mics that don't really talk to each other or are aware of each other. So that is just four distinct inputs on the DSP at that point. 
And Andrew, to build on that, yeah, that would, like you said, that would be four distinct inputs. So we would bring that in like we would any other multi mic situation. You know, even when you have like table mics, we'd bring it into, you know, the proper processing, a gated automatic mic mixer, and then send it out as a single feed throughout the rest of the DSP system. So once it comes in, it's still going to be treated like each individual microphone would be in any other type of scenario. Uh, uh, we've got a couple of questions before I move on. Um, this is for the Sennheiser folks. Um, can the microphone be used for voice lift in a large room? I believe the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, we have um, uh, several uh, really successful voice lift installs at this point. And so what you would do with those exclusion zones uh, that we looked at on control cockpit um, a second ago is you would create an area where the microphone has its pickup area, and then you would uh, be careful about how you zone your loudspeaker systems to create a, a mix minus. So you'd have an amplifier feeding a loudspeaker that is uh, in uh, the area where you want it voice lifted, and then you'd have an exclusion zone that does not include that loudspeaker in it. Um, so you'd typically use multiple TCC2s and multiple uh, microphone, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, loudspeaker channels uh, to create a mix minus uh, system for voice lift, but it does work well um, uh, in those scenarios. Very good, very good. Um, let's see if there's any other. There was one question, it must be somebody that joined a little late. You know, do, do you recommend using this for performance venues? We mentioned earlier, certainly for the for the camera plugin, uh, not a good idea. I don't know if you can speak to the use of it in in those spaces, Chris. Uh, I. So I had traditionally thought of this as a conferencing mic, but our um, our European colleagues have tested it with a, on a stage with an acoustic guitar recently, and they were pretty happy. And they're going to put it in for that, as well as some uh, uh, um, uh, uh, other pickup on a stage for a live stream. We've also seen it put in on some sound stage applications uh, up in the grid to get um, pickup uh, when uh, you, you can't necessarily close mic or use a lavalier, that kind of thing. Very good. But, mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to turn this over to Gary. Gary's going to show us how to use both plugins. So uh, to recap, there are two plugins. One of the plugins is to get control over the microphone itself. And then the other plugin is informing the camera preset recall. Yep. So let's take us through each of those. Yeah, so uh, right now I've opened up uh, design. Uh, this is the room we're in right now, our boardroom here at QSC. Uh, and the room already had an existing TCC2 in it. It already had cameras and everything like that. So basically, that's where we're sitting right now in this room. So here is the TCC2 plugin. So as was referenced earlier, you'll see a lot of similar aspects to the plugin that are also in control cockpit. So we didn't put everything in there because that's what control cockpit is for. But we put some things in there. So we have the horizontal and vertical angles. Uh, this isn't a live thing, so it's not moving. But these would actually move and track. As Patrick and I talked, we can show you guys that when we go to the live uh, actual design. You know, we have some audio level, you know, LED colors and the connection because connection stuff is always important for that. So <clears throat> this uh, actual plugin is going to be essential as part of the automatic camera preset recall. So you'll have to have both of them in your design. So, and, and, I'll, and I'll mention too, you know, people are asking where do I get the plugin? Those of you that might be new to QSYS, um, if Gary were to go up to tools and go to asset manager, eventually when these plugins are available, this is where you're gonna look to find them. So yep. the Sennheiser microphone is there now and the automatic uh, recall uh, plugin will be there shortly. Yeah, it'll be there when it's done, so it's still, Still invading. Technically not released, so here we go. So it'll show up once you install it. It'll show up in your tools uh, over here. You can see down in plugins, and we just grab that and drag it right in here to our design. All right, let's zoom in a little bit for everybody here into the section we're actually working in. So there is the actual plugin, and then we're going to talk, we'll talk about these two pins. It comes with the two default pins that you need to use to make the, the system work properly. They're already exposed. There's additional control pins that you can use for other things, uh, but we're going to go into the app or into the plugin and actually look at the plugin a little bit more. And once again, let's zoom a little bit more so you guys can see it better here. So 
starting at the top, you'll notice that there's a setup page. So this setup page uh, is going to be the global setups for that entire plugin. Uh, and then you'll have a microphone tab also, and those will be specific to each microphone that is connected to that plugin. So to set all this up, we need to be on a running design. So I'm going to emulate here. So a lot of this can be done ahead of time. Uh, we obviously don't want to push the design to the room we're in. Yes, because we're... you guys don't want to sit and listen to silence as the room reconfigures and everything like that. So we're just going to do it in emulation. So we're using a combination of the control pins I showed you before we went in. Uh, and then I also have, uh, we use control components. Yes. Forgot the word for a second. So instead of having to wire every little thing and expose all these control pins from like the cameras and from the router and from the microphone and then wire all around like we do our audio signals, we're using a lot of the control components so that we can just bring them in natively. So what I did earlier, and this is an important to note, on my camera section, I had to name my cameras. If you don't native, if you don't name your cameras and stuff, you have to give them a unique name. So when you drop them in, they won't show up as a named component. So you need to actually stick them and make names for them. So we have our front camera, we have our side camera, and then we have our router, and then our two uh, different bridge points we have here. So since we've named those, this room has two cameras. We'll choose how many cameras we want. And you'll notice that we ungrade the actual cameras that you can you know, the amount that you can use. So if I open this up, it'll tell me front or side. Well, I want my camera one to be my front and I want my camera two to be my side. Uh, right below that, it's identify which camera router is being used within for discrete switching. So obviously you, you've named your camera router, just router. router. That's, that's I'm so generic. And yeah, right? Fun, just router. So as we scroll down and you know what, I'm gonna jump back up to the top. There is a bypass auto recall here. And we'll talk about different ways you can use that in different systems. But it becomes key in some of your setup, you know, so that way you're setting it up, you're not always uh, triggering uh, camera position moves while you're doing it. All right, scrolling down the uh, plug in here, we have our PTZ switch delay. So this gives you the time of delay that somebody needs to be active in a zone. And we'll talk about zones when we switch over to the other tab. But that means how long somebody needs to talk in that zone before that will actually switch over to it. Uh, it's zero to 10 seconds. I usually start around five. We found two to be happy. It all depends on the size of your room. If you have a larger room, it might, you might want it to move slower. You might want it to move faster. Uh, it's all a little bit of personal preference. You know, you don't want it probably to go back and forth too much because then you're going to get a ping pong effect. So. But ultimately, the, the, the purpose of the switch delay is to make sure that if somebody in a different zone, if they cough, if they click their pen, if they make a, a, an unforeseen noise, or if they just say something really quick, like a one or two word answer, yeah. you don't really want that camera to switch automatically. You wanna make sure that somebody is speaking for a sustained amount of time. And that, that is what that switch delay is intended to do. Exactly, so when you take a breath, Patrick agrees with you for a second, it's not going doom, doom back and forth, you know, so. Exactly. Uh, crosstalk detection uh, and the home position kind of all go together. So the default home position uh, is what we would call the wide shot usually. It's the, you get to choose which camera there you want. So we choose front, makes the most sense. And we would probably choose this exact camera position that you see on us right now. And the way that works is when the far end is talking for an extended period of time, the camera will return to that home position. So that if I talked and then somebody on the far end started talking for two minutes, you don't get this close-up shot of me the whole time just listening to that person. It goes back to the wide shot in the room. And it also works with the crosstalk detection that if Patrick and I continued going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, at some point in time, the camera's just gonna go, I'm just gonna go wide. These right. two guys are talking back and forth. Can't decide which one is more important and uh, we'd rather just see the whole picture instead of... Yep. And this default home position is separate from the home position you would actually set in your camera. So when you set what you want to be the default home position for the camera tracking, you will save that. And we'll do that when we get to the live, the live side of things. All right, going back up, let's switch over to the microphones themselves. Slide that over a little bit. So in the microphone, mic one, uh, pretty easy on the tab, you just where the microphone's coming in. So we need to choose what microphone because it's going to be getting information from the microphone. 
So once again, we named our, our plugin, our TCC2 plugin as boardroom mic. So if I click here, I should see, oh, boardroom TCC. Click on that. And now we've got that microphone and we'll start tracking that microphone and it will give you that current angle, which is useful for setting up the zones. Uh, and then it gives you some other feedback and LEDs of local mic signal and far end talker signal, which are the pins we're gonna wire once we get out of talking about this part of it. You have up to 10 zones that you can, that you can make out of this microphone. So you say 10 zones, well, that's just pie, little pie slices you're gonna cut out of the 360 degree pattern of the microphone. Uh, it works in a, a couple great different ways and we'll, you know, we'll set it to four here a second. And then you'll see that it opens up the four and the five, six and seven are still grayed out. So when you're setting this up, you can take your zones and see how many you need in the room. And like, you know, we might have one on this side of the table, one at the head of the table for your chairman of the board, one at this side, and then maybe one up front for when somebody's presenting. Then it's easy just to move around the room and figure out where you are within the microphone. You can use control cockpit, you can uh, stay here in this and you look at the current angle, and then you set those angles for each zone. So when you would go in here, you would just set the angles and we'll just pipe a couple numbers in here, 15 degrees to 150 degrees. So we type those in there and now that angle is what, when something is in that zone, it'll activate that zone. You'll see that LED light up. We'll get into that on the live one in a second. And then you choose what camera you want for that zone. And then it gives you the ability to save the position. And saving the position is actually moving the camera to the position and clicking save. That number will get saved there and you will know where the position is for recall. It's not dynamic. It doesn't move with when you move the camera every time. That is a fixed set of coordinates, X, Y, and Z from the camera that it will recall every time you're in that zone. Great. So let's, uh, let's, let's actually- wire, Let's wire in the- uh, Yeah, let's do that. So the last things you have to wire in to do some uh, stuff here to make this actually work is, and the easiest way to do it, get out of emulation mode here, is to actually go and use a couple of gates. So we're just going to go into our dynamics here. We're going to pick up your standard, you know, audio gate. So, and you know what? We need two of them. So we're going to drop them both in here. And why don't you explain why we're using gates to do this? Because ultimately what, what we're trying to feed is the control information from the microphone to the plugin. Yes. Yeah, so with the gates is we're these two pins here are not audio pins. They're not the audio coming into there. It's a, uh, a reference pin for if the gate is open, true or false. So I'm actually gonna put the open pin out on each of these gates. So, and then when I wire them, so this will be my microphone signal. So this tells me that somebody in the room is talking. And then we have our far end here, which is going to be going the speaker signal. So that tells me somebody is speaking from the far end. So like in the TCC2, when you send the AEC reference back via Dante to the microphone, so the microphone knows what is in room and what is far end, we are doing basically the same thing here. So you've got kind of have two ways to make sure that your camera doesn't, you know, hear a speaker and then turn to that zone because somebody was talking from the far end because it knows who's in the room and who's far end with it. So the easiest way to do this is you take the audio path from the microphone and the audio path from the speakers and you just wire them into here. We don't care where they go after that. We don't need no output on the gate because all of our signal processing is actually being done up here still just as we would. So I already have a flag up here. You know, we have a, the microphone coming in via a, AES 67. That, that's that top block that's heading to that high yeah. pass filter. And then it goes into this high pass filter. And that high pass filter takes out some of that low end rumble before we get to our echo cancellation, echo cancellation block. So I'm gonna grab it from there. And yes, I cheated. I already had the TCC in there. So we'll gra grab that there. So now we have that signal there. And then we also have right up here on this, after this equalizer, we have the program left, right, because we have two stereo speakers in here. So we'll make this stereo and we'll start typing in our flags here and we'll take the program left. Ultimately, what we're, we're trying to do is, is to let the plugin decide which is far end audio coming in versus audio coming from the microphone. Correct. And then 
based on the audio signals that are going into there, you would set your gates. And what's great about this is that gate can be set separately from a gate you might actually be using for the audio path. Perfect. This way you can set a separate gate for the mic to actually react to, and it's not the same gate. And basically you're gonna set the TCC gate so it's higher than any background noise in the room, but we'll catch when one of us talks. And then the stereo gate is far end audio. Uh, so it shouldn't have to get moved too much, but you know, you want a little bit in there so that little clips and pops that come over the somebody's speakers don't trigger it. So that's everything we need to do to get it set up. If we go here, let's go ahead and look at the live system. Here's our live system. And we are, hey, look, we see ourselves multiple times. So we're in the room here now, and we're going to, we have our front camera position down here recalled. Uh, we've got that uh, coordinates in there. We're gonna show you how to do it on the microphone itself. And actually, here's a great time to zoom in once again. And Patrick, as you can see me talk, it says local mic signal. You see that LED light up. And as Patrick talks, I'm gonna start talking and it should trigger a different zone to, uh, to go. We bypassed it right now because we didn't want, as we were setting this up to have everything moving and stuff, we wanted to get it nicely set up before we actually did a demo. So you did see the current angle change when Patrick was talking. So we're getting the, the angles back from the TCC2 plugin. I'm gonna talk again so that way that you can see that it went from about 300 to about 102, which is where I'm sitting. Yep, perfect. And then, so what we wanna do here is we're gonna set up Patrick's zone. Patrick's in zone one. And we're gonna set up his uh, camera. So that's the front camera. So I'm actually gonna, I have to zoom out a little bit so I can see everything here. So if we, we've loaded, if we load his preset here, there we go. there's his preset. So this is where having the, the thing bypassed is great because if I start talking now, it would come over to me and then it just makes it a hassle for when you're setting it up. So we're like, oh, we don't like that angle on Patrick a little bit. You know, we want... There's no bad angle on Patrick. They're all good. <laughs> all the angles are good on Patrick. But you know what? Because it's so good, Patrick, why don't we zoom in a little Please. bit more on you? I worked really hard on my hair today, so I'd like that there to be go. reflected. So there the we mic. go. That's a better... We got a little bit better on that. So I'll go over here to zone one, and I'll hit save. And if you caught it underneath my flag there, you saw the position coordinates that were in here change. So it saved the coordinates that were from the actual camera itself into that and then now they're there. Now as I move the cam if I move the camera back out a little bit you'll see that that position doesn't change. That's not a dynamic. That's the position that you have saved in there. So every time you make a change to a position you have to save it and then you can manually choose to load it if you want to show things around. We'll hit home here again. Perfect. I think that's I think that's all we have for the uh, the demo part of this right here. Well, that is the setup. Now now the now it's the now it's the theater. Now we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna show one more slide because I want you guys to know what to look for um, when we're doing this demo because it's you might be enchanted by the amazing acting that's gonna happen. But what we want to make sure what you're looking for. Uh, and let me make sure. That's my cue to walk out of the room because amazing acting is not part of my uh Let me share my, my screen day. here. There we go. Share. Okay. So here, uh, before we get going, here is what you are looking for. You're obviously looking for the, the, the automatic steering of the microphone because um, we're going to actually call in our actors uh, to take their positions. And when they start talking, you're going to hear that the microphone is obviously directing its beam to the speakers automatically. Um, and if all goes well, uh, the camera will also be corresponding to the preset zones that we've got for our actors. Um, we're actually going to also, um, we're gonna speak at different volumes so we can kind of test um, how well the microphone is uh, balancing between soft talkers and loud talkers. Um, we're, uh, there's also gonna be a moment where Siobhan's character is gonna to try to interrupt, uh, but I, Somebody is going to uh, uh, not allow that. And you're going to see that the camera is not going to change because she's not talking for long enough because we've got that PTZ switch delay in an appropriate position. Um, obviously looking for camera switching. And then, uh, of course, um, keep in mind that uh, um, I'm not an actor and now we're Siobhan. 
Jacob is a is a is a good actor, oh. but uh, he does not. So, anyways, um, I am going to uh, let's. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to pull this all the way to the spotlight, and uh, I. Uh, this is the world premiere, so you're going to be really <laughs> excited to see this little bit of theater. Uh, let's pause for a second, and then we're going to get started. All right, so it looks like we have a quorum on our call today. So let's go ahead and get this started. This is serious business, you guys. I've got the best here today on the call to decipher this once and for all. Die hard. Is it or is it not the greatest holiday movie of all time? You guys, this, this is absurd. I mean, let's be honest. Every year, there's some weirdo on the internet that tries to say that Die Hard is the best holiday movie, which... Of course it is not. It is not even a holiday movie because it's not for kids. Like Elf, for example. If you take Elf, Elf is a great holiday movie for children. Okay, okay. First of all, Craig, uh, uh, you're the weirdo for thinking that Elf is a movie for kids. Buddy the Elf spends most of the time telling everyone that the four major food groups are candy, candy cane, candy corn, and syrup. That's a really great message for our kids. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, good point. You know, that is a great point. But speaking for my personal preferences, I'm more about, you know, the classic ones. A Wonderful Life, for example. Great storyline. It's Wonderful Life. Yes, that is a Christmas classic. That is a great holiday movie. It's got angels. It's got Jimmy Stewart threatening to jump off of a bridge. Well, I mean, let's see here. I mean... Uh, you guys, this is crazy. How can you say that Die Hard is a family holiday movie? It's got people exploding and people falling out of buildings and there's there's weird, you know, the, the, it's it's not very culturally sensitive and people oh, are yeah. dying. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. But uh, <laughs> listen, I admit a few people die in the movie Die Hard, uh, 23 to be exact, but it's in the title of the movie. At least it's not pretending to be something that it's not. Okay, you want family, you want family values. Die Hard co-stars the father figure from the 90s sitcom classic, Family Matters, <laughs> boom. You have literally proven nothing. I don't know what that boom is about. <sighs> I'm going to lower my voice, not only to test the sensitivity of this wonderful microphone, but is to stop me from strangling you <laughs> across the table. It is not the best holiday movie of all time. Consider, if you will, the 1990s classic, John Hughes film, Home Alone, oh, come where on. Kevin McAllister decides to wish away his family only to learn that the the true meaning of Christmas is, of course, family. It is not the best movie, Die Hard. It, it, uh, Home Alone is the best holiday movie. Okay, okay, great. Okay, okay, great. Okay, let's map this out. <clears throat> in Home Alone, Kevin McAllister gets trapped inside of a large building, right? And there are people breaking into it. Yes. Just like John McClane and Die Hard. In Home Alone, Kevin McAllister has to gather materials from around that building in order to protect the building and himself from the incoming aggressors, just like John McClane in Die Hard. Therefore, Home Alone is just a cheap knockoff of Die Hard, the greatest holiday movie of all time. yippee ki -yay, Craig, boom! Craig. And scene, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty bad. But as you can see, the microphone was working great. We're going to call Gary back in. Thank you. Thank you, uh, people that are applauding. Um, it, it really was not worth that applaud. Uh, Gary, come on back in. We're, we are now going to open up uh, the room for questions. Um, if the Sennheiser folks wouldn't mind turning their microphones back on, um, maybe we can address some of these questions. You know what, Patrick? That was great comedy I watched from outside the door there, you know? Gary, was... you get a raise, <laughs> you get a raise. Just let my boss know I need a raise for uh, complimenting all that, so. Um, Jason Kelly, uh, uh, I wanted to circle back on that chip size. Are you on the phone and, and did you find out what that chip size is? If not, we can circle back on it later. No um, yeah, I did drop that answer in the chat, um, but it is, um, it, it, it's, uh, I'm not as good at reading this nomenclature, but it's it's one slash two point seven inches. Got it. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. 
Um, let's see if there are any. It looks like we answered a lot of these questions. There's a question from Noel here that I see. Uh, his question is, is there any way, even if it involves extra clever programming, to utilize two cameras to have one setting up the next shot to avoid seeing the pan tilt zoom live? <laughs> uh, yet in this current MVP, there is not. Uh, that is actually a feature set to some of the people that we've already uh, talked to about this and have shown some of our partners this. And that is something that we've actually uh, are looking into. Uh, but we wanted to get it out. And I'll be honest, we wanted to get it out and get a little extra feedback from the channel, from all you guys out there using it on what we should do for a V2 version. We didn't want to sit there and try to build everything into it and then find out half the features aren't needed. So we came in with something that's going to be very acceptable for the situation we have in here. And then, uh, but that is one of those requests that we've already gotten from some of the channel partners that we've already demoed this to. So that's definitely one that's going to be on the list of possible features in a V2. Perfect. Uh, there was one question from Jonas. Um, he's excited about it. He wanted to know when the plugin is available. We don't have uh, the actual date. We know that it's coming. It, it should be on Asset Manager within the next couple of weeks. Um, hopefully before the holidays are finished. Um, but that is what we are, that's what we're shooting for. Um, but look to asset manager and probably what we can do too is everybody that's on the call, we can send out an email to everyone when it becomes available on asset manager, we'll hit you guys up and we'll let you know. Um, let's see if we yeah, we do have another uh, good question I think we should address um, from Please. Mark. Um, is there a home preset? So if you don't actually want the camera to be, uh, you know, zooming around as different people talk, um, what do you have to do to disable that tracking and just have? So that's perfect. That, that works in a, a part that I kind of glanced over at the beginning. There is a bypass on the actual camera preset. So you can add that to a UCI. So it's available on the touch panel or bring your own device. You can have it there and somebody can hit bypass and then you can put a home button there also so that they can recall the home position or you can tie some logic in to do that if you want. Uh, so yes, there is a bypass. There's also another reason the bypass is a great thing. And actually we did a, a trial version of this in Sennheiser's UK uh, office where they have a divisible room and they actually have four TCC2s and four cameras, QSIS cameras in there. And we actually brought in multiple versions of the plugin because obviously when the rooms are split, you want one plugin running the two microphones and two cameras in one room and one running the two cameras and two microphones in the other room. But when the room is open, you need all those to work together. So what we did is we dropped a third plugin in and in that third plugin, we have all four microphones wired to it. And when, you're, when the room is open, the other two plugins get bypassed. So they're not actually feeding any information anywhere. And that one plugin will take all four microphones in through a gated mixer and then call the right camera presets, which might be different from when the room was closed. So it, you can bring multiple plugins. And something else we didn't touch on was the fact that the, the one single plugin can run up to four cameras, 10 zones per microphone, and you can put up to 10 microphones into that plugin. So a lot of different options. A lot of different options to scale to the room and how you have your setup done. A couple of good questions. Alex asks, uh, can you control the speed that uh, in between camera presets? And the answer is, of course, yes. Um, if it's not in the automatic tracking or, pardon me, the automatic recall plugin. It's actually in the camera pr uh, component itself. So Yes. So what we did, uh, and then, in fact, if you do you have designer, I don't want to put you on the spot. If not, we can. I, I can I can put a screenshot into the um, chat after we're done. But yeah, yeah it's it's inside the camera component. You can go. You would. Uh, we have a checkbox called uh, speed by zoom, and you would uncheck that, and then you would set up manual speeds if you don't want it to be an automatic recall. So usually the the pan and tilt speeds are controlled by the zoom speed so that it all works together. You can disable that inside QSIS and then set up the speeds that you think are appropriate, which we actually did for yours. And some people might not think those were appropriate because it's a little bit of a taste thing, but we didn't want we didn't want you guys watching the camera go across the screen really, really slowly. Yeah. I mean, in reality, you would probably make it a little bit slower in, in a conference scenario. For our award-winning script, we wanted it to be a little bit quicker, but you have full control over how fast that goes. Um, there was just a clarifying question from Vim. Um, what happens when multiple people are speaking? Uh, we mentioned earlier that again, if there's if there's a bunch of crosstalk, there is a crosstalk setting in the plugin 
that will essentially trigger a, you can set up a wide shot that it will just go to if the plugin can't decide whom is, is um, taking preference, if there's a lot of back and forth, it will just default to this other preset. Yeah, because if, if you watch it live in the plugin when people are talking, you'll see the LEDs go to wherever the active state is, but it needs to be active for that PTZ time that we've set, whatever that may be, zero to 10 seconds. But if it sees bouncing back and forth a lot, that's the crosstalk detection, and that's when it will tell itself to go back to home. Um, there's a, a great question for um, the uh, Sennheiser folks. Uh, there are two uh, ethernet ports on the back of the microphone and there was a question about the wiring that is required for that. So um, one, one goes is accommodating Dante obviously and then the other is for power and control or is, mm -hmm. so ultimately you need, you need both of those connections to, uh, to make the microphone work, correct? Yeah. yeah, the Dante traffic is completely separate from the control and power. Got it, perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, I see a couple in there that uh, I, I think I might need a little Caitlin support on here since she uh, knows more about the inner workings of some of these things. There's one here, are control pins available that one can recall the different presets of the camera as an override? Sure, there are control pins for just about any control that you see in that um, in that plugin. So you can expose pretty much everything and manipulate it or wire it up to your own custom scripts, et cetera. Um, to modify this to your liking. Um, I've also mentioned in the chat a few times that when QSC releases in-house authored plugins, we don't encrypt them. So the source code can be found in your documents folder, in your QSC folder in your documents. Um, and you can modify this to your heart's content, but uh, code at your own risk. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, I don't want to run out of time. I promise to share a link um, for if those of you who want to get your Avixa credits, I'm going to quickly put that on the screen so that you can have it. Uh, let me get uh, there. All right, we did that. Okay, so um, for those of you who have already gone through some pieces of QSIS training, you would just go to the training website, make sure that you're logged in, and then click this link. Now, it's kind of, we're on the honor system here. We're hoping that you don't widely distribute this link, but ultimately this link will show you a hidden quiz for those that attended this webinar to the, to, you know, for the whole thing. You answer six quick questions. I'm pretty sure one of the questions is about Die Hard. And then you can get, <laughs> make sure you, you answer yes. Um, uh, and, then, and then you will be, uh, you will be able to claim those Avixa credits when you do your RU certification. So um, there, there are a lot of questions. I don't know that we're gonna be able to get to all of them, um, but we will actually, we'll probably put out a Q&A with all of the answers to all of these questions. Um, I wanted to thank you all for joining us. Um, it's been really fun. I wanted to thank our friends from Sennheiser for joining us. Um, thank you for lending us your wonderful microphone and, um, like I said, we'll, we love doing webinars, so we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.